morning, Texas. Good morning, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Looking right at you. This is this is very rare that we are on together, but we're in the same place. Come here and show people how we're together. Come here. Come here. We're in the same room. <laughs> this is rare. Yeah. Rare. So uh, it is a double treat to have my little Aussie brother in Texas and um, his, his gorgeous daughter, Zoe, she's visiting too. So uh, we're just um, giving them some good old Texas hospitality and showing them around. But uh, we've got something pretty special going on today. Yeah. Tell everybody what we're doing. Oh, this is the first time we're going to have um, someone that we've already interviewed back. Ask no, you some no. other questions. Back up, back up. Tell them what we're doing. This is part two. Oh, this is part two. This is part two. So we're actually, uh, we're actually <laughs> going to ask um, someone they've already interviewed part, our part two questions, which is really exciting because I know some of you um, that have been watching our show have really wanted to know sort of more from um, some of our speakers. So we're really, really, really excited to have one of our Iridology sisters join us today from San Marcos, California. She's the queen of Iridology. <laughs> she is the queen. So come on down. Please, Ellen, Ellen come on down. There, there she, she is. is. Yeah. Hello, Hello, you guys. Hi, thank you. And I was just in her office about four days ago taking my photos. Oh, about 96 hours ago. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Lovely to see you, Ellen. Great to see you both. Thanks for joining us again. And one of our first questions we want to ask you, it's a big question. How has oridology enriched your life? Well, I could talk on that all day uh, mm -hmm. because it has been the central focus of my life for a long, long time. Um, I had scoliosis as a child and grew up wondering what, uh, what I was to do with my life. I became a teacher, but I had a rod put in my back when I was a child. It was 16 inches to straighten my spine, two inches. And then when I was teaching in my 20s, I had an accident and the rod broke. Well, I had already been interested in nutrition because I taught children with learning disabilities and autism. And I had been studying nutrition for these children as well as myself. And when the rod broke and I had to have a major surgery to take the rod out of my spine, it left me in lots of pain with fibromyalgia, severe pain. And I uh, wanted to get well naturally and there were no answers really in the medical profession at that time for fibromyalgia. And so except for pain medicine that they told me I'd need to be on the rest of my life. Wow. And so I flushed all my drugs down in front of 12 doctors and I left and was determined to find answers. Wow. And so I ended up finding an amazing part Cherokee Indian herbalist named Luana and iridologist at the time and she looked in my eyes and put me on all kinds of cleanses and of course I have a lymphatic rosary hydrogenoid so she had me rebounding and hiking and skin brushing and everything and I also worked with an Amish herbalist iridologist at the time. I became so passionate about iridology I just loved that you could look in the eyes and be able to tell what parts of the body needed help and nurturing. So I went to Bastyr University um, in Washington and I studied iridology with Bill Caradonna. Then I also have studied with Harry Wolf and um, I went to Switzerland and studied with a medical doctor homeopath and he put me on 21 days of water fasting which I did and did a lot of cleansing of the morphine out of my body. Then I wrote Bernard Jensen a letter because I had been reading his books and actually had taken a class from him years before in 85. And he invited me to a 12 day seminar, which I came to California, studied with Bernard Jensen. And then he asked me, he said, darling, you don't want to go back to that cold country, do you? Why don't you stay here and work with me? So the whole floor could have fallen out from under me to stay and work and study with the great Bernard Jensen. So I ended up analyzing 
slides at the time because we did not have uh, digital cameras for sure. I photographed the eyes. I looked at hundreds of eyes. I probably analyzed 20 to 30 pairs of eyes a day on carousels, analyzing eyes and assisting him with his writing and his classes. Then I ended up studying more with Denny Johnson, rated iridology, I studied with Paulette Suzanne, and sclerology, Jack Chips and Leonard Melmauer. And I met my husband through working with Bernard Jensen, R. Jensen, and married him. And when Bernard passed away, he asked us if we would carry on his work, carry on the iridology, and I promised him I would. But I started thinking if something happened to me, what would happen to iridology? And I wanted to work with a vehicle that would support iridology forever and ever. And I was a member of NIRA, National Iridology Research Association, since 1985 or six at the time. And so I approached Cherry Wolf and Bill Caradona, and we started uh, working together to build the um, NIRA board of directors. And eventually I became president and just kept working and working to build an organization that would support iridology um, throughout my life and on past my life. And I will just say that iridology has taken me places I would have never dreamed. I got my health back. With a back like mine, I have traveled all over the world. I can't even tell you how many countries I've been in. Just determined that I was going to teach and train people to become instructors and part of uh, um, our organization, which is now IPA, the International Iridology Practitioners Association. And I have a very busy practice, which rewards me every day of my life because no two eyes are the same. And I never get bored. And it's just fascinating to me to look in the eyes and see the physical areas of the body, the emotional, the personality, you know, the connections with the parents and the grandparents and the birth order, all of that is so enriching, not only for others, but for my life. Because in looking and helping others, it helps me stay on a good program as well. So I would just say that, um, you know, I can't even put into words how iridology has enriched my life, but that's a thumbnail a uh, small picture of everything that it has done for me. That's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Every time I hear that story, I learn more and more about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Thank you. And, and I know you can talk for 10 hours about that topic in your story, but that was a really great summary. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, there's, there's another new question that we want to ask. We've never asked this one before, but um, what sign in the eye do you see most often? Now, there's a part two to this question as well. We want to know which sign that you see that just keeps appearing and appearing and appearing that, that, that you see. But then tell us about one that you find that is very rare, too. Well, what I have been seeing most often lately is yellowing in the sclera, markings in the liver area, and pinguecula. And that, for me, is showing a lot of liver imbalances and congestion, which ends up leading to, um, you know, people are wondering why they're having headaches, why they're having menstrual pain, why they're having hot flashes, why they're having bloating and digestive issues, and nobody's been able to tell them and when I look in the eyes and see this liver congestion coupled with bowel congestion tendencies, but in the sclera, we see it's really going on in those areas. And uh, when we do that cleansing of the bowels and the liver, oh my, the headaches go away, the menstrual cramps go away, the, the hot flashes go away. And, and so um, I, I've been seeing that quite often. Another one I see quite often lately is anxiety tetanic. 
Mm. Um, with a lot of contraction furrows. And I believe we probably have more contraction furrows in our world today uh, than we ever have because, and that has to do with generations of tension and worry and stress and uh, loss of minerals. And um, so I've been seeing that a lot lately. And when it's coupled with a heart lacuna, um, you know, we really have to work with those people to learn to do proper breathing, to slow down, to calm themselves down, uh, to protect their heart, which is showing a genetic tendency uh, in the family for heart problems. So, you know, those are the common ones I'm seeing right now. Awesome. Mm -hmm. What What would be a rarity for you to see? Like once in a blue moon you get to uh, well, see. Well, something that you've seen recently that's been rare. Yeah. Well, I've seen recently a couple of things. One's the Voigt's limbic girdle, which looks like almost like a sugar crust on the outside of the iris, not to be confused with lipemic diathesis, which is lipids. These are minerals out of solution. And every time I see this Voigt's limbic girdle, I ask about osteopenia, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, and it always goes together. Um, if they have not been tested and not had a DEXA scan, I send them for a test to test their bones. The other one I've seen quite recently, um, and Christos is aware of that because he was here with me, it was the coxine. And the coxine is a filament that is, uh, does not recede after birth from the cholerate that goes across the pupil. And that does not, um, you know, obstruct their vision at all. But I have had optometrists send their patients to me to ask about what that means. And I have found that with the cock sign, there's usually wavy stroma, a medusa lacuna, bridges in the collarette. They tend to have blood sugar issues. Um, they also may have some bronchial issues, especially if the medusa is in the lung reaction field. They're very sensitive people. And I've studied with Daniele Larito of Italy, as you both have as well. But um, he says that these people love to travel. They think outside the box. And they're searching for new things. And so we have to work with these people to keep their uh, their lungs healthy, their blood sugar healthy, so that they can go on and do their travels and their uh, their looking for new things, their research and their studies. So um, those are two I've seen lately that are fairly unusual: is the Voigt's limbic girdle and the coxine. Very good. Awesome. Very good. I want to backtrack just for a minute. When you were talking about uh, one of the signs that you see quite often where it is in the, uh, the sclera and we're talking about the liver and the pink wacula and we're seeing uh, a lot of liver activity. Um, th my thought on this is to definitely help those patients or, or their clients there, help them with the foods first yes. and some gentle cleansing herbs I know, I know that when I've done liver cleanses and I've tried to do them too fast because I was like, let's get this out. Let's clean it out. You know, I was sick as a dog. So yeah. I usually, with my clients, I will back into starting with foods. So I, I come from that food place and then I gently introduce them to something more like, like herbs. But usually lemon balm is one of the best places that I can start. And I will also use the oils as well. So I'll take Melissa oil and have them put a drop or two around the liver area to start that uh, cleansing cycle. Do you agree with that, that I uh, process? I definitely do, Kathy, because I have so many people that have been on a lot of fast foods, a lot of TV dinners, not knowing that that's causing a lot of congestion in mm. their liver and mm. especially a lot of sugar, which makes the bile very sticky. Mm -hmm. And when that bile is very, very sticky, they're going to get plaque in the arteries and that's what your LDLs are really mm -hmm. showing. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, they're not used to any sort of cleansing. 
So I recommend as Bernard Jensen always did six vegetables a day and two fruits a day mm-hmm. because that gives us our 80% alkaline. And then, uh, you know, staying away from fried foods and greasy foods and maybe cutting down to just organic chicken and um, wild wild caught fish mm-hmm. and but just introducing a lot of greens into their diet Mm -hmm. and that is the very best way to start your healing and your liver cleanse Mm -hmm. i also have people that swing from one extreme to another Mm -hmm. they'll go from all fasting or all junk food Mm -hmm. and they'll go i've been on all junk food you need to put me on a fast and i'll say you need to learn to eat properly Mm -hmm. and you need to eat a lot of vegetables Mm -hmm. and a couple of fruits a day and so just learning that balance is the hardest thing for Absolutely. most people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We see that they're missing balance in their life. Exactly. And so that's why, that's why the diet is so hard for them to uh, accustom or find a, fine tune that to their, to their schedule. So I understand that completely. So I just, thank I just you. wanted to, to bring that out. So thank you for, uh, you know, confirming that for yeah. everyone. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a bit of an all or nothing person sometimes and love, love to just go straight into a cleanse, but I, it's just so much better when I'm just, you know, I mean, I can have my little naughty times now and then, but when I'm just consistent, I just feel amazing. Yes. Mm. Excellent. All right. So, Ellen, we've got one more question for you. Where do you see yourself in our adult in the next three to five years? Apart from in your office where you are. <laughs> Well, you know, we're going to the Philippines in November. Yep. I'm right. speaking to the um, opticians in North Carolina in May. Right. And I'm very proud to be that the opticians have decided that they want to learn iridology. Um, and I'm also writing. I'm continuing to teach. I'm teaching a class in July. Um, we're doing um, rayed with Denny Johnson in June. So there are many things that I see myself, but on the whole, the main thing is for me to practice what I'm teaching first Mm -hmm. and then to continue to travel and teach and write and participate in our IPA seminars and uh, growing our IPA organization so that we have more more instructors in more countries of the world to get this message out to the world that you really don't have to suffer many times. You can heal yourself naturally or prevent things before they ever happen. And that's because of all the medical problems that I've been through. Um, I really, really want to teach and help people to be able to live a happy, healthy life without going down a road of so many needles, knives, and drugs. Mm-hmm. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Or well, a kilogram exactly. of cure, I'd say. <laughs> exactly, you guys. Exactly. That's the metric system. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever yeah. gets you there. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ellen, we've come to that place where we would like for you to pick a number between 1 and 36. We're going to ask you a random question off our old board here. So give us a number. I'm going to pick number seven. I knew you were going to pick that. I, I that's, that's what he said. <laughs> I said to myself, when, when I was getting the board ready, I said, I bet you picked number seven. <laughs> I think you're psychic. Well, well, when I worked for Bernard Jensen, our, our office building was called the House of Seven Happiness. And Bernard really believed in the seven, seven days of the week. And he also talked about Seven, seven vegetables, seven fruits, seven nuts, seven seeds, seven beans. So I've just always loved the number seven. Awesome. There we go. Oh, well, we've got a question about birth order. Oh, cool. That's not a lot of, uh, we don't talk about that a lot. I'm introducing it more in my teachings. I know Chris is. Chris and I have taught uh, several birth order classes together. So uh, we're bringing that out more and more. Um, so it, this one's for you, Ellen. So there are four girls in my family and I'm the oldest. I try to get along with them, but I find that two of them really are annoying <laughs> and they don't listen to me. It makes me so cross. 
Is there anything I can do? <laughs> well, I'm an old oldest girl as well of two girls. Um, I I think to understand the birth order of each one, uh, the firstborn girl is very mothering and she wants to take care of everybody and she sort of wants to make sure everybody's in their place at the right time and doing the right thing. But she needs to understand that the second born girl has a lot to do with the, um, helping the world as well. She could become a nurse. Um, she may like time alone. The third born girl really is kind of a free girl. She likes justice. She likes to speak out. She's very active in what she does. And the fourth born girl can be a bit of a free radical. I mean, they came to change the world. So if you understand the personalities of your sisters and learn to love and allow them to be exactly who they are, you might learn something for yourself to help you balance yourself. But I think all four girls should need to study birth order so they can understand themselves better so they can have more harmony with each other. Exactly. I love it. I'm not even going to touch that. She no. said it all. <laughs> And, and I mean, when you were talking, we all know that, you know, the, the ones she wasn't getting on with were the number two and four, which is the, yeah. the, the, yin, the yin girls. Yeah. But um, but in my experience, um, I think one of the best things to do is is to, you know, I mean, one girl's want to control everything and they want, you know, they think all the other girls should be like her and exactly. you know, be tiny like her or this like her or that like her. But I think having a good relationship with a mother is really important and I think the mother should really teach this girl to not have to mother the others. That she's yeah. the mother. This girl's a little princess, but she's the queen. She can mother the others. So it, it's important to play and to be a kid. But then the mother has to do that. Because yeah. whatever the mother does, she's going to do better. So. And the mother and the father need to study the birth order to help Absolutely. the firstborn girl because um, the firstborn girl is going to buy for the attention of the father and want to do better than the mother. Yeah. And so, so they they really need to um, all study birth orders so they can understand one another and then they can all grow from it. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a lot of parents that'll say, well, this kid didn't come with a manual. And I'll tell them, I've got the manual. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, I've got the book. I've got the book. <laughs> it's called thanks Birth to, Order. Thanks to Denny Johnson's work. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Was, he, that's the reason why we've got five kids, like literally. Yes, yeah. and and that's the reason why you've been such great parents to your five yeah. children. Thank you. And having two sets of twins, um, I think uh, birth order has really. I mean, I think your your family is an example, Christos, of of how much birth order can help make a family balanced and happy yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Thank I've you. been to your home and I know mm -hmm. your, your kids are amazing. <laughs> he, he is the perfect teacher to teach birth order. He really Absol is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, well, that's great. Awesome. That's great. Well, <sighs> I think we just about finished up a very good part two to iridology around the world with our favorite queen iridologist. Oh, it's uh, my honor and my well, pleasure to be here with both of you. We, we could yeah. we could listen to you all day if you could talk all day, but <laughs> I know that that's impossible. Uh, yeah. But I know. Well, I just all... want to remind everybody we're having an IFA symposium in San Diego yes. in February. Yes, we yeah. are. And uh, and we've had some it's three amazing iridology online symposiums. But it's going to be so wonderful to be there together. Yeah, that in Can't person. Wait. We need that. We need that in person energy. Yeah. And so San Diego is the perfect place to come in February. We need as many people that are not only IFA members, but outside of that, around the world, the ones that are watching us in different places that belong to the UK Iridology Association. Isn't that yeah. the guild? Yeah. Okay, we need all this. We need this camaraderie. We need this support. We need this this sharing, this fellowship, this love. So we, we need can to just come together, and that we need yes. to all come together and support iridology. As Absolutely, one. doesn't matter. That's why we formed IPA to to be a, a family for iridology that support one another. Doesn't yeah. matter where you are. It doesn't matter the iridology you practice. Come and support each other. 
Absolutely. There's the key. And I think I think your vision um, of you know of having an organization that supports our adult is really manifested, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it um, you know, together with our founding people, I, I just feel like it's been uh, a quite an amazing journey. Growing strong. Yeah. Growing yeah. strong. Well, thank you Very good. For, for joining us today. It's been As absolutely always. awesome. As always. Absolutely. Much love and blessings to everyone. Thank, Thank you, you. Take care.